And thank you, Pastor T, for being Pastor T. Amen. 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 Um, so I'm super excited um, today. Um, my word from Rooted in Glory is submission. Huh. And it's funny, I asked for it. I was like, yeah, I can do that. But then when I thought about it, I was like, submission. Um, sometimes when we think of the word submitted, or submission, it leaves a nasty taste in our mouth. Because it's something we don't want to do. Because we look at people will take advantage of our submission, right? And so because people will take advantage of it, we look at it like, mm, I don't think I want to do that. So I will give that we're going to look at it as having a submitted heart and submit it in a process of transforming your heart. So I want you to look at submission, not to say that you're giving up who you are to God, but that you're going through a process of a heart transformation. Amen? Amen. All right, so I have a disclaimer this morning. I am not that knowledgeable about sports, so don't hold me, okay? So I'm gonna use a walk with me through it, amen? So, and don't get mad at me and the people I use because I looked on Google and this is what they said. So if you disagree, it's not my fault. Just look at Google, okay? All right. So imagine Patrick Holmes. Um, there's a first slide. I don't know if Mike has that. Yes, so our first slide is of, yes, yes. 49ers writers, right? So, all right, I know. We, I know, I chose them intentionally because um, it, it, it brings some heart, you know, in this, right? And so we're talking about a submitted heart, so I want you to flow with me. So imagine Patrick Holmes is a quarterback who plays for the Kansas City Chiefs, right? Now, we know that's not who is up here, which is the 49ers and the Raiders. But let's say that he decided to play on two more teams to help them out. Can Patrick Holmes play for the 49ers and the Raiders along with staying with his home team? Yes or no? Y yes? No? No, he can't? He can only choose one, right? Okay, so, all right. Um, okay, but let's just imagine that he could, right? Because when they play each other, then the backups will play so he don't have to play, and then he gets triple the work, triple the money. Can that work? No? Some people say yes, some people say no. Okay. All right, so if it's no, okay, how about the LA Lakers and the Warriors? That's my second slide, right? Let's say that Steph Curry and LeBron James play on both teams when they are playing other teams and play on their prospective teams when they are playing each other. Can this work? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, are you sure? Okay. Because there are some people who are just uh, LeBron James fan and some people who are extremely Steph Curry. So they're like, no, 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 no. They cannot play on both teams. All right. Okay. So I, I get it. So we are living in times where people are more decisive about their sports teams and who they're rooting for living a life than living a life on purpose for God alone. We have people in the White House that espouse Christian narrative, but do not have the character of Christ. In 2022, Pew Research stated 65% say it is not necessary to believe in God in order to be moral and have good values, versus 35% says that God is an essential component of morality. So the reason why I mention our sports teams, just like we notice here, is that we are very we, we are standing two toes, ten toes down, two feet down on our teams, but we will waver in our being committed to God. I hear, you know, people say, well, you know, I don't have time to pray. I don't have time for this. But when cal calamity happens, the world look for the God that most do not believe in necessary to have, wondering where is God in this calamity? 
When we look at across the world, some people will say, where is God? See, I told you God did not exist. But at the same time of them saying that, they're not serving God. So to you, my brothers and sisters, I invite you to get to know God in a very different way on today. I know, I know. You are here on today, so obviously you know God and have a relationship with God. And that is true, but I invite you to get to know God from a different perspective and not from a doctrine or some religious group's feelings, but through his word. See, as we, some of us grew up in church, and if you are, you can raise your hand. And some of us grew up in church where God was this God where everything you did was wrong. You breathed wrong. You went somewhere you was wrong. You dressed wrong. You, your life was wrong. But we did not understand God to be a loving God. Whether it's a God that we consider to be our mother, brother, brother sister, lawyer, right? We sing those songs that God will be all these things to us, but yet and still... We don't know. We're still like, I'm not quite for sure. Even in social media, people are debating whether God is a God for um, people of color or not. And this is a debate, even though we know that Augustine and Tertullian and we have the Coptic religion of which we understand that it was black people that was Christians. So we don't understand where this comes from or how it's here, but it's here and we're having these conversations. But, and and it rubs people the wrong way. So as we talk about having a submitted heart, there are three types of people who are here today. One, you have never heard of Jesus and someone invited you or you came across this in your feed. Either way, we thank you for listening. Second, you are saved and you know God and I invite you to lean closer for listening, right? And to get to know him better. Third, you love God, but y'all not cool like that. There's some issues and problems that happen, and some people representing God did not necessarily treat you with the best. And your encounter with them left a sour taste in your mouth. I want to re-invite you to look at God in a way that makes you comfortable and understand that wasn't God that hurt you, and I apologize on behalf of them for their behavior. So in our story, so remember we're talking about having a submitted heart. So in our story, I want to take you on a journey where a man who grew up in life knowing he was not, knowing he was, but not really a part of the culture. He was the male who was not supposed to live according to Pharaoh's decree, he should have died. But due to recent events, his life was spared and he grew up to be a good man of the tribe of Levi. Our scripture picks up right after Moses leaves Egypt, running for his life due to (laughs) trying to right some of the wrongs. He runs to a place called Midian, where he lives, he get married, and have children. Moses was just living his amazing life without a care in the world. One day, he was minding his own business, keeping the flock, and was far from where he was supposed to be. So we take up our scripture, and it is Exodus 3, 1 through 14. I know it's a little bit much, but I tried to go a little fast. Not, not speed demon, but just enough to get us to the end goal. Amen. So as you know, as you're going throughout your life and you're living your life the way however you're living, um, God may be a part, may be associate, may be in specs, maybe you come to church just every now and again, okay? So Moses was living his best life, so you are like Moses, living your best life, doing whatever it is that you do, right? So Exodus 3 takes us right here, now, one day. Exodus 3 and 1. Now one day when Moses was shepherding the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, he guided the flock far away from his usual postures to the other side of the desert and came to a place known as Horeb, where the mountain of God stood. There the special messenger of the eternal appeared to Moses in a fiery blaze from within the bush. Moses looked again at the bush as it blazed, but to his amazement, the bush did not burn up in flames. 
Moses to himself, why is the bush not burning up? I need to move a little closer to get a better look at this amazing sight. Some of you have already had an encounter with God that has done some amazing things in your life and you moved a little closer to figure out why. There are some situations that happen in your life that shouldn't have happened the way it did. It shouldn't have worked in your favor. You may not have been qualified. You didn't even know you just walked upon a situation or God healed you in this most miraculous way and you just don't understand like Lord you having an encounter with me yes so as we look at the fourth verse it says when the eternal one saw Moses approaching the burning bush to observe it more closely he called out to him from within the bush eternal one Moses Moses and then Moses says I'm right here the eternal one says don't come any closer take off your sandals and stand barefoot on the ground in my presence for this ground is holy ground I am the true God, the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 7, I have seen how my people in Egypt are being mistreated. I have heard their groaning when the slave drivers torment and harass them, for I know well their suffering. I have come to rescue them from the oppression of the Egyptians, to lead them from that land where they are slaves, to give them a good land, a wide open space flowing with milk and honey. The land is currently inhabited by Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. The plea of Israel's children has come before me, and I have observed the cruel treatment they have suffered by Egyptian hands. So go, I'm sending you back to Egypt as my messenger to the Pharaoh. I want you to gather my people, the children of Israel, and bring them out of Egypt. And this is Moses to God. Who am I to confront Pharaoh and lead Israel's children out of Egypt, eternal one? Do not fear, Moses, I will be with you every step of the way. And this will be the sign to you that I am the one who has sent you. After you have led them out of Egypt, you will return to the mountain and worship God. Moses, let's say I go to the Israel, to the children of Israel and tell them, the God of your fathers has sent me to rescue you. And then they reply, what is his name? What should I tell them? Eternal one, I am who I am. This is what you should tell all the people I am has sent to rescue you. Now, as we look in our scripture, you're like, Yolanda, what this has to do with being us having a submitted heart? I'm going to tell you. Let's look at Moses, right? So first of all, Moses get a call from God, right? So I'm telling you right now, God is calling you. Just in case you didn't hear him or you didn't see him in all the ways that he may have showed up, God is calling you, right? This is your call. So then we find out that he turns around and, and you know, Moses is a little being Moses-y. Like, I don't know what you're talking about because I did some stuff back there and I'm not going back there. Like, they gonna kill me. I, I'm not going back to Egypt, right? And so some of us are being called into spaces and places where we feel like we will die if we go back. Some of us are being called in spaces and places where God just wants you to trust him in it. Now, if you notice, he never said, God never said it would be easy. He never said it would be a walk in the park. He never said that you won't suffer. He never said you won't have pain. He never said you will not cry. He never said you won't get angry and mad and disappointed and want to throw in the towel. God never said that. But what he did say was that I will be with you. In this text of having a submitted heart, it is not about the submission in the form of someone lording over you, but going through a process. This process will draw you closer to God in your own unique way, utilizing who you are authentically for the glory of God. In order for that to happen, your heart has to go through a transformation process and become renewed in God. It is my theory that away from Egypt, Moses changed to become wiser, curious, and humble. The journey of our life will mold us and create curiosity and humility through life. So it is my take that as Moses left out of Egypt because Moses was part of Pharaoh's household. So let's say he was a part of the privilege, right? So he was financially stable, he had it going on, and he felt that he had power. And so he moved as such. And then he left all of that to go to Midian to attend a flock. He left that 
and he became humble. There are some times in our journeys of life that God will lead us out of what we feel like is up here to bring us to what we may think is right here, but God is doing a transformation in our hearts. Some of us can have all the things. We can have the nice houses, the best cars, the best jobs, and we can live a life that others would envy, but we have no peace in the midst of it. There's no humility in it. There's no place where you feel like home, and there's no one that you feel connected to. But you're living this life that everybody wants. And then all of a sudden something happened and it goes away. And then you realize that the life you're leading now is better than what was. It's simpler than what is, right? So I'm gonna tell you a brief story and I'll get to my points. So there was a gentleman from Rwanda and he went to the seminary that I went to. And um, he began to share his journey of being in America. And he said, Yolanda, um, he was like, there have streets I couldn't find where I live for, a, for, he said it took me hours to figure out where I lived because he left and he came to the seminary and couldn't find his way back home. He was like, every time my wife calls me, she asks me, why am I so tired? And he said, well, I have to work for everything here. And she was like, what? He was like, yeah, I have to work for everything here. So now in my American mind, I'm like, well, where do you go that you're not working, right? So I asked him, I said, well, what do you mean? Could you like explain a little further? And he was like, sure. He said, where I live in the village, he said, we plant our own food. We have cows for our milk. He said, everything the land gives me, I own my land, so we just need to go into our house and that's all we have to do. He said, here, I have to get up in the morning, I have to go to work, I have to go to school, I have to go back to work. He said, I'm rushing every day to do something, but in Rwanda, I just get to be. So then I asked him, I said, well, if that's the case, would you ever want to come to America? And he started laughing hysterically and said, no. <laughs> like, no, this is not the place for me. He said, I love my simple life, right? So sometimes simple does not mean that you do not have the greatest joy. So we have three points that we find in our story. That number one, that God sees and hears you. Some of you have been crying out or wondering, do God see me? Do he see my suffering? Do he even hear me? Do she even show up for me? And I'm here to tell you that yes, God sees and hears. He knows what's happening and she knows what's happening in Gaza, knows what's happening with Israel, knows what's happening here. And so my second point is that it's time to draw nearer to him. Just as Moses draw near to the bush, God wants you to draw near. And it's your choice. This is what I love about God. It's all about choices and decisions, okay? There's no force. See, in our society, you have some of those who are uh, Christians who say that we have to live a certain type of life and that they force it on everyone else to live. But I would say that if you live the life, you don't have to force anyone. They will see your light and they'll be drawn to it, right? So you don't have to force it, but the key is you gotta live it, okay? So number three, you say, okay, Yolanda, God sees and hears me, but I don't see no movement. Okay, you telling me to draw near, so when does things change? God works in partnership with you. You are not alone. So it's not that you're going to do all the lifting, but a lot of times we want God to do all the lifting. But I would say that if you asked LeBron James, if you asked Patrick Holmes, if you asked Steph Curry, do you just show up for game time and don't practice? I would tell you they would say no. If you ask them like, well, what does your diet look like? 
do, are you always at McDonald's and Burger King? Or, you know, are you always having fried chicken at home? Like, what is your diet like? I would say that they're, they are disciplined and they come to court ready. They have their off time. They're still being ready. They have their quiet time. They're still getting their mind right, right? They're, every part of them is about the game that they play. But when it comes to us, what are you eating? And I'm not talking about the physical eating, which that's what we're talking about too, but I'm talking about spiritually, what are you eating? Is your alone time more than your screen time? Is your prayer time longer than your talk time to your friend who's always complaining? See, what we have a tendency to put into our spirit is what is going to outpour out of our hearts. So being submitted to God will be hard to go through the process if we're not surrounding ourselves with people who help pour into us what God wants for us. And we also got to do our own work. So we can't blame anybody that, you know, I can't blame somebody that I stood on the phone and talked to them or that I played the game up to dark 30 or that I decided that I want to hang out with every weekend and not spend any time with God. That's my choice. And what I love about God is that God gives us choices, but our choices reflect the outcomes. So the first thing we notice is that God has seen the suffering of his people. God has seen your suffering and hear your cries. God has not forsaken you and that he loves you the more. It is through the cries and suffering that Moses was called to answer the issues of his people. I will dare say that you have people waiting on you to step into what God has called you to. All of your trials and upsets have prepared you and you are ready. The question is, what is stopping you from having a submitted heart? So in the ministry that God has called you to, one of the things that we learned in seminary is that it doesn't look like what we see church looking like in yesteryears. We don't see everyone on the doorposts. We don't see every, we don't even have choirs anymore. We have praise teams, right? Um, we don't even have pulpits. When you go to Liberty, if they haven't changed the church, you will see a pulpit, right? We don't see those things anymore because church is changing, it's evolving. Right? It went from a group of people coming together to now we come into an edifice, right? And we sit down and we listen and we hear, and some of us is online and we make the connections this way. So, however, God is showing up in your life, uniquely you, God wants that. You don't have to change to fit someone's doctrine or religious view. If you have orange hair, God wants you. If you have a unique idea that's out of the box that it's like, well, I haven't really seen anybody do this, but God wants you, whatever that may be. And God wants to partner with you in it. And so you're like, well, what does a partnership look like, Yolanda? Well, I'm here to tell you. A partnership looks like peace. It looks like when you're suffering long, because I think Pastor T talked about nobody wants to suffer, right? But it looks like when you suffer long, God is with you in the suffering. God is with the Palestinians. God is even with Hamas. God is with Israel. God is with Maui. God is with the young men who did the shooting and those who have been shot. God is big enough and have capacity for all. So God is with you. So the question is, what is preventing you from submitting your heart? I can tell you for me at times, it's because I don't want to. I just don't want to. I don't want to get out my bed and or out my house, because I work from home. I don't, I don't want to get out and have to come to church on Tuesday to pray at six from seven. 
all the day, all the time? Can, we, can I get a break? Right? I, I don't want to um, come to church sometimes on Sunday, so I don't, right? Or it, it may look like, well, you know, I don't want to do any extracurricular activities like the brown bag and all of that. That's nice, but I'm tired. That's what it looks like when you check out. That's what it looks like when you don't want to. And I'm not here to say that you have to. I'm just trying to make a compelling argument to say that you should. See, because when things get bad in our lives, we want somebody to come and pray for us. When situations happen, we want God to come in and do whatever God does. And then we say, well, Lord, how come you showed up for this person, but you did not show up for me? Now, don't get me wrong. God is not a transactional God. Where you do something for me, I do something for you. But what we understand is that those who have put in the work, they have something to draw from. Have you ever tried to draw from a well that was dry? Have you ever tried to do a battle that you weren't ready for? Your prayer time and your alone time and your time with God is getting you ready for the battle that is coming. It's getting you ready for the victories you shall win. It's giving you wisdom in the midst of your trials and your suffering that you know how to act the next time. And believe me, there will be a next time. But you know how to move differently. You understand that I can cry out to my God. I can go and say, Lord, you know what? I don't have any words right now. But I can just crawl on Jesus and I know that you will come and deliver me. Lord, I know you see me and you hear everything. And I'm drawing near to you. But I don't like the situation that I'm in. See, that's the relationship you can have. See, Moses told God, I don't think that you want me. I don't think you're sending me. Moses said, no. How many of us have said no? How many of us have said, uh, I don't think so. I'll pass up on that. And your life take you through trial and tribulation, and you wind up right back in the same situation, and you're like, okay, Lord, what do you want? There's a part in the King James Version where Moses said, here I am when he's called. God is looking for some here I am's. God is looking for some hearts that submitted to God. But how can we be submitted if our flesh has control? So how do we get our flesh under control? By getting more of the word inside of us. Now, I won't lie to you, being in seminary made me question everything that I knew about Christianity. Everything I learned, everything that I thought I knew. So sometimes our intellectual capabilities would lead us to discount God. And so in my talk with God, I, I said, well, Lord, how do I take all of this? And then God sent me down memory lane. And he said, I was there for you. What happened to your daughter? I said, she lived. He said, right. What happened to you? I said, I lived. He said, right. And so he said, what happened to your mama? I was like, she lived. He said, right. So God told me, I'm still the same God. You just got new information. So even in our worst and our best of times, God is still God. And no, everything will not work in your favor. We, we get those songs, it'll work in your favor. You just show up, God's going to do it, it's going to... No. No, it, it will not. I promise you it will, won't. But it's beautiful to have some brothers and sisters who will pray for you. It's beautiful to have some people who will walk this walk with you in the valley where you're not alone. It's okay to scream and holler at God. God is big enough to take it all. 
it is okay to be hurt and filled with pain. It's okay to have joy, unspeakable joy. But through it all, the question is, what is stopping you? So we have some cards that was passed out to you. And could somebody give me a basket? We're going to have prayer service right now. And what we're going to talk about, what we're going to do, thank you, sir. What we're going to do is I want you to take some moments. If you have something that is preventing you from drawing near to God, something that you feel like, well, God don't really hear me, put that down. And if you like, well, Lord, you know, me and you ain't cool like that, but maybe, right? Whatever is preventing you, whether it's someone hurt you in church, whether you had an experience and you felt like God did not show up, whether you had an experience and you felt God did not hear you, or some of us feel like, does God really exist? I ask that you take a moment in time and fill that out. And when you can, let's come and drop that. But as you come, know that the moment you stand up and the moment you walk down the aisle, you're making a declaration that God, I know you hear me. That God, I'm going to draw near and I recognize I'm not alone. And it is in that that I want you to come. And as you drop it in here, we're going to ask for a submitted heart to God. And no, I won't read them. (laughs) We'll probably save them and have prayer for them on Tuesday as well. LJ, could you play us a little something as the people are um, writing, sir, if you can? I know my, my um, sermon wasn't a shouting sermon. And it's not a sermon where we gonna get up and run around. But my hope is that having a submitted heart that is rooted in glory, whew, that it will change and transform your view of God, that you will draw closer and nearer to God, And that my hope is that just as Moses went, that you will go as well. That just as Moses changed, that we will change as well. And just as we're very staunch in our teams, our NFLs, whatever other team that you like, that we're, we're more committed to God than that. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Amen. separately we all came and dropped but if you don't mind um, I know that you know some people are social distancing but if you don't mind if we could stand if you uh, don't mind holding hands or touching elbows and we will um, and if you do that is fine we're gonna respect that and we will respect the, the fact that your neighbor says no I'm good but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to God Ask God about a submitted heart. Amen. Hmm. 
We will wait on you. Amen. Whew. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Whew. Is there anyone? Lord, my Heavenly Father, we thank you on today. Whew. We thank you for your word, oh God. Lord God, we come having a submitted heart today. Lord God, we come knowing that we're going to draw closer, that you see us, that you hear us. Lord God, that you ever present in the time of whatever we need you in. And Lord God, we decree and declare on today that we will partner with you. Lord God, that we will put you first. Lord God, that we will wake up with you on our minds. Lord God, that we will walk in the cool of the day with you in our hearts. Lord God, that at the end of the day, Lord God, we will seek your face. Lord God, that we will eat of your word to be transformed by the renewing of our hearts and our minds. Lord God, we thank you on today. Lord God, we repent for not putting you first. Lord God, we repent, Lord God, for not seeking you first. Lord God, we repent for all the things that's not like you, not of you in our lives. But Lord God, we ask right now that you change it all around. Lord God, we thank you for favor. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your peace. Lord God, we're stepping out right now on today, oh God. We are gonna do it differently on today. Lord God, we got another chance to do it differently. Lord God, we ask for a heart transplant. That we are submitted to the process. Lord God, that even though we're like Moses saying, no, it's not us. But Lord God, you have seen us. You have sought us out. And Lord God, we say, here I am. Send me, oh God. Lord God, so we ask that you have your way on today. And that you move like never before. Lord God, that even when it's a no, oh God, we understand. And even when we don't, Lord God, we will take joy in the midst of it. And Lord God, for every yes, we thank you. For every holdout, we thank you. And Lord God, we ask that you have your way in this place. Have your way in our homes, in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. And Lord God, we will ever lean closer into you and we give you all praises and glory and honor these many blessings we ask in thy son jesus name amen